It's a beautiful day in Northern California and I'm at Duncan's Landing in the Sonoma Coast State Park. Today I'm going to take you along as I explore this area and then we'll cut back to my home studio as I make a mixed media painting inspired by this day. Hello love, welcome. My name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an artist and instructor and this is the Wild at Art Show. In today's episode, I'm going to discuss nine tips for painting abstract landscapes. If you paint or simply appreciate abstract landscapes, you may have some unanswered questions about how artists capture the essence of a landscape while keeping it loose and abstract. I used to get really confused about this. I'd try to loosen up but would always seem to get stuck in the details, which can be frustrating. So if you're excited to join me for this topic, hit the like button and let's get into it. All right, number one. The first tip is to get out in nature and enjoy yourself. One of the best reasons to paint nature-inspired artwork is to explore nature. Not only does this give you great inspiration for art, but it also infuses your being with the landscape. You will regulate the natural rhythms of your body. It helps you de-stress. It lowers your blood pressure. Plus you'll connect with the land and the view in a way that you can't do with a picture of a place that you've never been to. It also gives you a reason to travel for work. You can write off your nature travel if you have a business as well. And most of all, you'll remember how lucky you are to be an artist. If you can't get out in nature right away, look over your old photos of places you've been to or would like to go. It's not quite as nice as a visit, but you'll amp up your inspiration and be able to look at composition, color, light, and textures that mean something to you personally. Number two, take lots of pictures from different angles. Because this is an abstract landscape, you don't want to capture the scene perfectly. You want to interpret the essence of it. You'll want to get all loosey-goosey and have fun with it. And this means that you can mash up several different elements from different vantage points in one painting. So hunt around for all of the best imagery from one place, and then you'll be equipped with lots of fodder for your artwork. Number three, go back to the studio. You could try and paint on the spot on plein air. I do paint on plein air a lot and lead painting classes on location on the coast where we paint more realistic landscapes. And if you're interested in painting on plein air, I have lots of info about that on my website. However, it can be challenging to paint abstract landscapes when the scene is right in front of you. It can be done, you can try it if you'd like, your painting, your rules, but if you're just starting out, you might want to remove yourself from the scene in order to do an abstract landscape. And that way you won't get caught up in the different details that you would typically want to gloss over for an abstract. And remember, you're not there to paint every blade of grass or every crack in the rocks. You're going for the feeling of a place. Number four, look at your reference photos. Once you're almost ready to paint at home, in your studio, or wherever, look at your pictures closely. Figure out the gist of your composition, what colors you will be mixing, really analyze what's going on in the scene. Is there something you want to change up or exaggerate? Anything you want to eliminate? What do you want to hint at? Or what do you want to bring focus to? Look at your pictures through the eye of an artist and find your light and darks, your contour, and all of those components. Take your time with this and really soak it in because in the next step, number five, you're gonna hide your reference photos while you're painting. Yes, you heard me right. 
This is going to help you remove yourself from the details and rely on your inner interpretation of the scene. This way, you can get lost in the painting process for the sake of painting, not for the sake of trying to replicate the landscape. And I promise this will help you keep it abstract. If you're holding a loaded paintbrush, put the reference photo down. Don't look at it. If you need to refer back to it, take a break, walk across the room from your art and have a little work in progress critique with yourself. Okay, we're about halfway done with this list and I wanted to let you know that at the end of the video, I have a special time sensitive deal for you that you won't wanna miss, so be sure and stay with me until the end. Number six, start your painting. Now you get to do your thing. Establish your composition, fill in your colors, layer your highlights and textures, play with drips, splatter, and be bold to paint outside of the lines in your mind. Mix it up. Make marks and shapes that are a leap away from a realistic painting. Number seven, experiment with mixed media. If you like collage or bringing in other utensils like pencils, pens, palette knives, stencils, now is your chance. Abstract landscapes are a wonderful genre for experimenting and making up new techniques for yourself. And if you would like more training on techniques, I do have abstract painting and mixed media classes for you on Skillshare. You'll find them on my class page, which I will link below. So I invite you to check those out and make learning a lifelong practice. Now I have to get down. Oh crap, my butt, out. Number eight, remove anything that's not working by painting over it. Remember to take lots of breaks and step back, change your perspective and figure out what's working in a piece and what is not. If something isn't to your liking, layer over it. Let it dry, paint over it. Not the whole painting, mind you, just the parts that you don't want to keep. It might feel kind of icky because you worked on it for a while, but if your piece is muddy or too busy or you think that you need to change up the composition, go for it. By the end, you want every area of the painting to feel at peace and finished. All right, one more tip to go. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you may want to because in my next video, I'm gonna talk about how to find your why for making art, which is one of the most important things that you can articulate when it comes to selling your art. So subscribe to my channel or my website and don't miss out. Okay, number nine, add your finishing touches. Just like sprinkles on a cupcake, every time I finish a painting, I like to give it some pizzazz with things like splatter, scribbles with a pencil, or even some metallic paint. Here, some small adjustments can go a long way. Okay, this piece is all wrapped up. I did my finishing touches off camera because I sometimes need a little privacy with my artwork before I call it done. And I'm calling this piece Pacific Love. And for the special deal that I told you about earlier in the video, I'm offering this painting at 20% off for the first 24 hours that it's up in my online shop. It's the only time you'll find me offering discounts and I love this early bird 20% off deal because it gives my faithful viewers and collectors the chance to get rewarded for staying in touch. You don't need a code. The deal will be displayed on the shop listing for 24 hours. So if you connect with this piece and you'd like to pick it up, don't delay because after the first 24 hours, it will go back to regular price, which is still a good deal on this piece, especially because I raise my prices in general from time to time and you wanna to get to it before inflation does. You can bring this beautiful creative energy into your collection as a conversation piece and show off your unique style and passion for nature and the arts. 
So don't wait for this one and be sure to subscribe to my channel or my e-newsletter at jenniferlaurelkeller.com for future early bird offers. Thank you for watching and much love.